right, good morning everyone. I'm going to begin with, um, thank you for everyone who's given in their tithes for next year. It is so helpful when we are doing the budget because we like to make sure that we are supporting the programs in the, in the, the way that the church, the church um, is desiring us to. So if you haven't had a chance to turn those in, you can turn them in. Like I just emailed Roger. But I mean, you can literally do whatever you need. Just get him the information. Um, so that he, we can make appropriate decisions. So thank you, thank you all for that. We have had a wonderful weekend already. We, um, the, this church packed 46, or 46 boxes, although I might be stealing your thunder, Ann. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna yeah. do it? Yeah, the first words I wanna say are thank you. Thank <laughs> you for all the pies. Thank you for all your support. For the members of the committee, thank you for coming in here and putting your backs at risk. We really appreciated it. We've still got 19 boxes to go out to Java, but they're going on Monday and are being delivered at round noon. Anyway, the long and the short of it is, job well done. 46 people, 46 families have been helped. 149 people. Pretty darn cool. Um, also, hey, so last night I started panicking because I realized it's time to give you guys the devotion book very soon. And I realized I need three more devotions, three more devotions. So if anyone could send me a devotion, and if I have more, we'll go through Epiphany. But I'm not going to get that crazy. So I just need three more devotions. And I know I said last year's book was great, and it was, but I even think this one's better. So I bet I can't wait for you all to receive those devotions. Um, just email those to me. Today would be good. Tomorrow would be OK. <laughs> OK. Um, also, let's see. Next Sunday, we will only have one service, right? It'll be our um, All Saints Sunday. Right, Cynthia? Christ the King Sunday. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Well, thank goodness for Cynthia, because I wrote a whole sermon for not all saints, but Christ no, the King. OK, well, I'm confessing. No. Um, and, I, and, I, and I changed all her music for this week. And she, she goes, hey, can we sing this and this and this and this? And I'm like, it's the week before Thanksgiving. Shouldn't we sing this, this, and this? She goes, it's not Thanksgiving either. <laughs> So I'm a whole sermon ahead. Uh, yeah, it's good news. All right. Um, also, a reminder, the sock party. It's a silly thing, but it's fun. So please join in. Find a fun pair of socks, wrap them, and we do that little fun gift exchangey thing. And um, next week, we are ordaining Kathy, too. So um, I know we're excited about that. I, I'm all over the place. Oh, oh I know. Devotions. I want to read out the names of the people I've already received devotions from because last year I missed one. So if you don't hear your name, let me know. Linda, Mary Dudley, Linda Smizer, Phil DeFusco, Cynthia, Lee C, Sue F, Rick W, Ann M, Louie, Paula, Sandy, Dave, Ken, Mary, Arlie, Peggy, Pat, Nancy, and Jerry. So if your name wasn't on there, I have missed you. And I don't want to have a reoccurrence of last year. And Jerry, you need to resend yours. Yes, because it's not in a format I can open. Thank you. All right, I think that's about it. I know I forgot. Oh, Wendy. Uh, just a reminder that we still have hair bear tags to get gifts for children who have financial needs. Um, and and if you're worried about time, you can also write a check for 60, right? right? And then we'll do the shopping. We, as in Wendy, we'll do the shopping, <laughs> do the shopping for you. So, um, and seeing Wendy reminded me. Okay, so remember we've been asking week after week about the recording thing. So now we've come to this. We never got anyone who said we want to be in charge. That's okay. But what we would like is people to rotate doing it because it really does serve a very good purpose. So if you are willing to just be the one who pushes the button and then pushes the button to end it, 
please let me know. Um, and we'll put you on the list. They'll train you how to push the button. Is it more, is it harder than pushing a button? Just say no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll train you, you can do it. Um, otherwise, on the weeks we don't have anyone, we will just not be recording it. And I know there are people who are depending on it. All right, I really do think I've run out of things to say. Well, apparently I haven't. No? Yes. Next week, last week, so I passed them out to people now. Does anybody else need a hard copy? I need everybody to fill theirs out. Your kids can fill theirs out. Yes, yes. nobody needs one? Could, could they put not only the page number but the title? No, I can uh, title's fine. I don't need a page number. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I will say there is a letter writing campaign for a certain hymn going on. I received an email, which is kind of funny. And I will not say who the culprit is. But it, apparently it's a Lutheran hymn that um, they loved as a child and they really want it out there. So there's a little lobby, a little lobbying going on. It's wonderful. Anything else? Yes, Sharon. Uh, if anyone would like to make a donation towards a poinsettia office from the church for uh, half of December. All right, so 10 poinsettias. How do you sign up sheet? Sign up sheet. Okay, please do that. That would be wonderful. Anything else? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Let us worship him. That is so good. Oh my goodness, what a wonderful addition to our church you guys are. All right, let me calm my spirit. Let's pray. <laughs> Gracious Lord, we just give you thanks in all things, in particular right now for this choir. Lord, as we worship you today, please lift us up into your presence. May we hear your word through, through the Holy Spirit. May you apply it to our hearts and our minds. May we hold on to it as we leave this place and spread your love amongst this community. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. 
Please join me in the call to worship. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are God's people, the sheep of his pasture. And for God's days with thanksgiving, and his source with praise, give thanks to God, bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. God's faithfulness is from generation to generation. Let, Let us worship, worship God. God. Let's stand and sing together. Let us turn our hearts to confession. Thus says the Lord our God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out the scattered sheep, so I will seek out my people. Trusting that God is indeed seeking us, let us confess our sin together. Shepherding God, you have called to us but we have not answered. You have sought us out, but we have continued to wander. You have tenderly gathered us together and cared for us, but we have not extended that same care and mercy to others. Forgive us, remind us, teach us. Set us free from sin that we might turn toward your love and justice for the whole world. Guide us so that tentative step after tentative step we may walk in your way.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear and believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven, so let us rise and give glory to God. God's love with one another and the children come down snow 
and this church and the people in it and the singing and Pat being back and, 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 and let us go out with joyful hearts. Amen. Amen. Oh, oh, wait, I got something. And thank you, thank you for Christy and Bronwyn who are teaching today. They are so excited. Amen. <laughs> All right. A con. I know they've been planning really hard for you guys. Way back, way back. There's Christy. You want to go with her? Yeah.
Our scripture this morning is from the book of Psalms. Listen for the word of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday, when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away. You are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed, and in the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger. For your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our we have set our iniquities before you our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80 if we are strong. And even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you to teach us to count our days that we may gain a white, wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. This is the word of the Lord. The psalmist says, So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Yes, that is our prayer. Help us to focus on everything that is good, to not focus on everything that is out of control. Let us look around and live in the life that we are granted today in this moment. Let's not let everything else steal that joy away. Do you know, I was ruminating on this biblical lesson when Ann Mishy called me and we were speaking, and on her own, without even her knowing this was something I was, I was thinking about writing on, she said, God didn't put me on this beautiful world with all these beautiful people, wonderful people in my life for me to ignore them because lots of people are behaving badly. And that's shared with permission. Because that's what we tend to do, right? We start focusing on everything that's going wrong and we neglect to see what's really great right in front of us. How often do we waste our time worrying or being angry or holding grudges or watching the world news and falling into despair? This psalm reminds us that there has always been reason for despair and people have always felt it. The fall of the temple, not once but twice. Babylonian exile, 40 years in the desert, the beheading of John the Baptist, the crucifixion, and honestly, right, I could have gone on and on. We can certainly choose to live in despair, but God reminds us that we are not a people that are that way. We are not that people. We are a people of hope, a people of promise, a people of joy in the midst of pain. Remember what the angel told the disciples as they watched Jesus disappear into the clouds. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you saw him go into heaven. In other words, don't just stand there waiting Go out into the world and do what God has called you to do. And they did, even in the midst of very difficult and emotional times. 
We are reminded again and again and again in scripture that whatever we are so worried about is probably not worth the pain that we are expending upon it because even death has lost its sting. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed like those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. We are a people of hope. And whatever is happening now on earth, God has seen before again and again. The psalm says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals, for a thousand days in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. See, we do have a limited time on the earth. So what is your choice going to be? It is precisely what Anne pointed out. God has given her reason for joy, so why not enjoy it? Because tomorrow is not promised. James 4.14, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. All we have to do is look out our window for a reminder. All of those people lived for a time, loved for a time, served for a time. And now they are, as we will one day be, back with our Lord. Our time here on earth is limited for every single one of us. So how are you going to spend it? In lamentation, woe is me, or in praise? In hiding in fear or out serving? In anger and judgment or in forgiveness and love? We have given the choice every day, actually all over the day, more and more times. I'm reading, I was reading this article this week and the author said, you're not a victim of your life. It may feel like that when things are not going the way we hoped or planned, but a victim mentality will do nothing except reinforce negative thoughts and feelings, and you will find what you seek. You will find what you seek. I love the psalmist imagery. It's grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. And I admit that I'm one of those people that in the evening I can be more negative. I'm tired, things feel overwhelming. And then in the morning, the problem, whatever it is, feels workable. I'm renewed. You may find what you seek at night. I tend to seek and reinforce negative thoughts. And then in the morning, and the morning comes, and I see the problem in a whole new light. Does anyone else ever go through that? It's pretty common, right? I want to share a story I found on the internet this week. Some years ago in South America, a crew of Peruvian sailors headed up the Amazon River and they came upon a strange sight. It was like a scene from the Twilight Zone. A Spanish ship was anchored off the coast and all the sailors were stretched out weakly on the deck of the ship. As the Peruvians drew closer, they saw the Spaniards were in terrible physical condition. They looked the picture of death itself, their lips parched and swollen. They were literally dying of thirst. Can we help you? shouted the Peruvians. And the Spaniards cried out, water, water, we need fresh water. And the Peruvian sailors, surprised at this request, told them to lower their buckets and help themselves. And the Spaniards, fearing they had been misunderstood, yelled back, no, no, we need fresh water. But they received the same plot, reply from the Peruvians to lower your buckets and help yourselves. And then they lowered their buckets. Is that how God feels? Seeing us mess things up again and again, time eternal, telling us that fresh renewing water is there if we would just lower our buckets. After all, God sent us Jesus so that his belief in us would not be predicated on our behavior. He could renew his faith in us precisely because he gave himself as the solution. 
What a gift. Imagine remembering that each and every time we begin to circle downward. When the Lord is our dwelling place, nothing else is going to matter as much. Whatever the problem is will dim in the light of the joy of his love and his protection. And that's why we are called to live and go forth in joy, not because of anything we might accomplish or whatever circumstance we're in, but because our lives are a pure gift of God. The life-giving water is right there for us. John 7, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who's thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow through them. That is the promise to you. Liver, li rivers of living water. This week is Thanksgiving, a time when we are quiet in our hearts and we make time to focus on our blessings. And there's always something to be thankful for, always. Top of that list should be God's gift in Jesus Christ because nobody can take that away from you, nothing. The living water. No one and nothing can take the love of God in Jesus Christ away from you, not poverty, not illness, or age, or government, or even death. So let us take the psalmist's advice and count our days so that we may have a wise heart, living lives worthy of these gifts that God has bestowed on them, and finding joy as we do. Amen. So let us sing together one, two, and four. Come ye thankful people, come. We give thanks for the life of Judy Morse, Sue's sister, who passed away this week. We also give thanks that Pat is returned to us. Thank you. <laughs> oh. 
Don't make me cry again. I'm all teary today. I don't know what's up. <laughs> Who else can we give thanks for today? You. Thank you. Are you pointing to someone else when you said you? <laughs> sister's home was bombed and her husband was caught in the rubble. The joy to say God and out. He's okay. Oh, oh, oh okay. Thank you for your prayers. Absolutely. Thank you, Ann. I have thanks that the Helping Hands Fund of the Mission Group uh, had 400 pounds of animal feed delivered to an elderly woman who's mm -hmm. struggling with cancer. And she serves a next door neighbor who's a, our most destitute wood ministry client. So she has this enormous heart for helping others. And uh, so the Thanksgiving basket for the neighbor was delivered to her. She's going to cook it for her neighbor. But her animals were uh, starving, so 400 pounds were delivered. And uh, two hay bales next to me. I do have one concern that there's a Subaru in the. Uh, family um, that has uh, defective shocks and springs having delivered 400 pounds of food. Oh. <laughs> well, I want to applaud because I'm a huge animal lover, so thank you for noticing that need. We really need to meet this lady. She is un unbelievable. She's a big inspiration. And addressing it. Sounds right up my alley. Yeah. We're thankful that after a long wait, finally we have a new pharmacy opening up. Is it open? Oh, gosh. And we don't have to drive an hour anymore. Yes. There's going to be a line out that door. That's wonderful. Let's keep them in business this time. I don't know what went wrong last time. I wasn't here, but let's keep them in business. Yes. I would like to thank all the people who will very generously stay for a few minutes after next week's church service to help us with the hanging of the greens. We're locking the doors. <laughs> They'll all be in the library with directions on where to put them, so it'll be easy, quick, and we'll have our whole church turned into Christmas. And then you come to the pastor's house, and I'll have the boxes ready. <laughs> But yes, please stay and help next week. Sandy. Um, I'd just like to thank Kara, Jerry and Ken. They're going to take all those extra books that we didn't give away to Charlottesville, to the library, will be given to prisoners, et cetera, people that need books. So thanks, Jerry and Ken. <coughs> Any other giving thanks to the Lord, sharing joys, or any other needs that we want brought up tonight. Yes. I want to share a joy if I can without crying, and John will appreciate this. John and Dwight and I are part of the Smith Foundation Scholarship. It gives scholarships to Nelson County High School students to go to college. And we mentor them too, and so the first young woman that I've been mentoring, Julia, is graduating from the VCU School of Business next month. Oh, wow. Congratulations. Thank you for that work on behalf of God. She'll do it all. She's a hard worker. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> so um, this is a joy and concern. <clears throat> Yesterday, my family um, lost my dear Aunt LaVita. And um, uh, just uh, prayers for my mother. My mother and Aunt LaVita were really close. <coughs> it's really hard on her. Absolutely. And thanks, thank for her, for Aunt Lavita, her life. She's an amazing woman. What a gift, right? What a gift. Jerry, are you raising your hand or are you just leaning? I guess he's just leaning. You're just you're like, <laughs> Okay, all right. Anything else? Yes, Ken. Big thank you to all the people that participate as wood ministers. The season has gotten underway. Um, hopefully it will be a mild winter, but each week we meet and uh, have a time to be able to socialize while we split and deliver wood to clients who really need it. We give thanks for the wood ministry. Um, an, unspoken an unspoken prayer. 
We also give thanks to Hope's legacy, um, and Jane was here earlier. Um, today is their adoption day, and also our giving hay day. Um, so if you have, find it in your heart, or, or the Lord leads you to that, look them up. They took in 125 horses this year, and right currently have 35 to 40 horses, and it'll take $20,000 in hay to have them fed through only the end of this year. So we give thanks to the Lord that there are people who care and are paying attention to, the, to these wonderful horses. Um, and I put that out there on their behalf. All right, anything else before we turn to our Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Oh, gracious Lord. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Shouldn't that be us every day? But the beautiful thing about Thanksgiving, Lord, that we see is that we can say it to everyone we meet. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. And there seems to be this unity in that, Lord, that is life-giving. We thank you for that. We thank you for the people who work hard to look for and address needs, to find the joy in giving, the joy in living for others, the joy in knowing you and serving you. Lord, help us to remember that our time here is fleeting and not to waste it, to waste it in despair or worry or living in pain and Lord, when we see people who are doing that, help us to give them some of your light when they need it. Lord, there's so much to be thankful for. For the wood ministry, for the beautiful music here, for taking books to prisoners, for a new pharmacy, for the life of Phyllis's aunt, for the life of Judy. So much to be thankful for. And yet we worry, Lord. We worry about what's happening over in the Holy Land. But we know you have your hand on it. We pray for an end to it. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayers in our silence, prayers that we have lifting up to you, unspoken prayers and those spoken in our hearts. us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All that we have and all that we are is a gift of God, so let us collect the offering.
this week of Thanksgiving and look for the joy, actively look for the joy in our lives and perhaps even point out that joy to others. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you his peace. Go out and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.